Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna talk a bit about UX prototyping tools and how to pick the right one. We have so many different tools in UX and it's so hard to pick just one because if you join a new team, new organization, you're gonna have to use totally different tools from what you used before. And then you have to relearn and maybe invest your time and money into a new toolkit, into kind of like upskilling yourself. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly my thinking and my kind of subjective experience and how I took these tools you see right now in a video tend to recommend to other designers like maybe yourself. Through the tools I'm gonna discuss to you today, we have Axure, you know, industry giant from early 2000s. And we have Sketch, which everybody more, more or less knows, especially Mac users, Mac designers lately, because it has so many different plugins and most recently interactive bits. And we have Adobe XD, which is an answer from Adobe to all the other tools. We have Principal app for micro animations. We have Flinto, another micro animations app. You know, all the dribble fancy animations are made mostly for Flinto and Principal and, you know, Atomic and, and other apps. We have Draftium, which is the tool I recently reviewed, which is quite low fidelity. We have Envision Vanilla, which is quite a simple clickable storyboards. We have Envision Studio, which is a build up, which involves, you know, all the functionality from, let's say, what Principal can do, a little bit of what Axure can do, a little bit of other things. We have Framer X. I wanted to also include the original Framer, which allowed you, you know, to include with APIs and all that jazz. I think FramerX is, is much more user-friendly and it's like a second iteration of a Framer product line. And I think it's pretty good. It can do a lot of things with it, especially if it's, you know, like kind of like a mid fidelity. We have Supernova Studio, which is basically what happens after you design things and you want to put it into code, like a conversion tool. Then Marvel app, what Envision does plus extra things and, and most recently the user testing features and recording features. Webflow is similar to Supernova Studio where you actually do everything in code and the responsive layouts. Protopie is a really interesting tool I recently found out about. It's basically allows you to access different native functionalities, let's say on your phone, kind of prototype around it. It's re it's similar to what other tools have, especially as well as let's say the Proto.io is another tool which is you know, it's quite similar to, let's say, what Marvel does, as well as you have an atomic. It has like a really rigid structure. So it's kind of like what Axure did right with, let's say, dynamic panels, where it's really clear exactly what's the nesting like and what you have to update in order to make a different states happen and animate between them. And lastly, Origami Studio, which is Facebook design team built and run tool, where, which we use for Instagram, Facebook, um, and all other Facebook family products. It's quite limited and it's quite hard to learn, but there it's still evolving. So I think it's good to kind of cover it as well. And I also came up with this criteria for a specific project. You need to pick just kind of like a couple or one tool. How are you gonna make the decisions? What are the key inputs? For me specifically, it's six of them. It's prototype fidelity. So you know how in depth and how high of a fidelity it has to be. Ease of use naturally, if it's easy to use right away, if the usability of the actual tool is good enough to produce usability for our user. If time to master is short or is it long and if it's worth the investment. And we have price as well, so this is a big factor. Uh, versatility is basically how it integrates with other UX processes and other tools. And lastly, future relevance. And this includes Lindy effect. What I mean by that, if a concept been in the market or around you for X amount of you know years, it's more likely to stay that way for another X amount of years. With every given day, it increases by one day, let's say. So if a tool stayed here for seven years and three days, it's likely that it's gonna stay for another seven years and three days and tomorrow for seven years and four days and so forth because it's been you know ingrained in the market and it keeps on becoming critical part with a caveat that developers are still improving it and it's still relevant and you know all that. But since if it's been for a long time, it means that all those variables are in place and it keeps on evolving and it keeps on staying relevant. Anyhow, I'm gonna position every icon of different tool on these scales and then I'm gonna talk to you exactly why and which are of the tools are most outstanding and why would they choose them based on that criteria if I'm, let's say, limited or I'm going by it. Boom. This is prototype fidelity. So more or less, I would position all the tools like this. 
As you can see, Supernova Studio, Webflow and Axure are quite on the highest fidelity and that's because you can use variables, you can use code, you can spit out code, you can allow users to input specific detail, you can use, you can make lifelike prototypes or lifelike products. If let's say Webflow and Supernova Studio, they're meant to spit out an actual code and you know for it to be usable in you know actual applications let's say so it's incredible and then in the middle we have a lot of different tools but just to name a few let's say we have let's say envision studio which is quite in between with adobe xd they're quite the same to me at least on the same type of step i think competing right now envision studio probably being a little bit behind and focusing on different things than adobe xd then we have principal flinto for like micro interactions and you know we have marvel's envision vanilla app and sketch which are just basically clickable storyboards and lastly drafting which is like an entry level easy to use type of thing i think more or less this describes it again there are a lot of gray areas and overlaps but this is what i mean by fidelity it's not that you know you craft like wireframes versus mockups i mean by fidelity that you can actually achieve you know how lifelike it is really are your users gonna know that this is just a prototype or are we not gonna even know that this is a prototype is it gonna feel life and an actual product like for them the next scale is ease of use i mean this is this is really tough but i think the, the more complex tool it, it is let's say actual webflow or supernova the harder it is to use because it packs a lot of muscle so i would almost go and just revert them the other way around and this is how it kind of would look like for me at least take a screenshot pause this if you need to see the detail again a lot of gray areas within but just something what outstanding as i said it's complete reversal of a fidelity one more or less you know you have envision on the low low end like sketch on low at marvels because they're so easy to use uh, they're so simple that you know it's just anyone can master it from get-go you don't have to be a designer Meanwhile, on the other end, you have Origami Studio Framers and all the other bits which use as APIs and they are much more technical because it's much more code-like. That's why it ends up there. In the middle, you have everything, what, what you know, all the tools which basically they're trying to achieve the highest fidelity, but they're also trying to be user-friendly. Question is if they're doing it right, I don't know, but you know, they're basically, to me, at least ends up there from experience with other designers. Next one is time to master. This is a really interesting one because it really depends who you are. I'm going to base this on my personal experience and the experience of other designers working, let's say, with me and junior designers, which I coach, let's say, and how what it takes for them to learn it, right? I think it ends up more or less like this. Um, again, the middle is always tricky. Can't say that this is for sure. Probably for you, it's totally different. It's similar to what you see on ease of use on top above. Let's say Sketch took me, I don't know, a day to master because I had previous Photoshop and Illustrator knowledge, so I knew how to do it like right away. Envision is like a no brainer from out of the box, draft team as well. Atomic and Proto.io are really well structured tools as well as Protopy, but it has a bit more complexity because you need to know the native functionality in Protopy, let's say. Flinto principles are a bit of a hard nut, so it, it's on that side. Adobe XD and Envision are just complex tools because they, they do a lot and they're quite muscle tools. So it also requires you to, you know, to play around, go through multiple projects. And then you have all the other bits. Let's see, Supernova Studio is still for me, it's hard nut i'm trying to crack it i'm trying to like learn to master it um but it's just there are so many use cases and you just can do so many things because it's you know it's meant to spit out actual code and be functional so it's really hard to master it and if we go to price price for me is probably the trickiest bit because it's really hard to compare apples to apples here because some of them are subscription tools Axure allows you to just get an act like a license for 400 quid or 500 bucks usd and then you can just use it for you know like a year of support same as for sketch principle flinto or let's say origami studio and vision you can just start it immediately and most of them as well have trials either for days or for let's say prototypes or let's say even marvel allows you to like one 
free prototype I think uh, as of now and then if you run out you have to put input more and maybe just limiting some functionality Origami Studio is completely free. Facebook team contribution to the community, so it allows you to just use it right away. And that cloud up above is basically a mixture of different, I don't want to even estimate because let's say 7.99 versus 10.99 or like 20 bucks a month. And then multiple bands is just not worth the hassle. But just so you know, if you want continuously pay, pick one of those bits in the cloud. If you want one off, pick principal fint of sketch, Axure, also one off. You know, or subscription, it's like in between the two is quite high, highly priced, but it also comes for like 20 bucks a month or something like that. So you can do that as well. You know, it's all affordable. I think Adobe is probably one of the most expensive if you want to buy it outright um, or if you have this enterprise license, it's just thousands. Uh, but other than that, you know, because it's part of the, the Adobe suite, but other than that, it's more or less clear. So. I refuse to put them on the scale basically because there are just too many bands. Next, we have the versatility. I think what's clear is how, let's say, you can use the tools in other disciplines or other bits. Let's say if it spits out code, you can implement it in any framework, you can edit the code, you can put it in a development. How does well does it integrate in the let's say, UX process and a build process? I think it's a no brainer. You know, Sketch because it's so. Uh, it's, it's like a staple for, let's say, graphic processing right now, and graphic editing and UI production and UX, everything in between. You can do so many different things with it. All other tools, which are kind of specialty, let's say Falinto or Proto IO or Atomic, which are quite similar, I would place them somewhere in the middle. The more to the left you go on the scale, the more they're like specialty based. So like, it's like, oh, it's for wireframing. Oh, it's for, let's say, clickable storyboard. Some of them lack, let's say, recording capability, sharing capabilities, collaboration capabilities and so forth. So there's a lot of overlaps here and there, but I think that's more or less summarized. And lastly, we have future relevance and Lindy effect, which I described before. And this is, this is really tricky because it's how likely it is that the tool is gonna remain for years to come. And I only base it purely from how many years and how ingrained it is in the culture it already has. That's what Lindy effect is basically. So let's say I don't have specific years in my mind. So if I'm not right, bear Please bear with me, but I think Axure is definitely going to be on the top somewhere. I think Sketch is going to last for quite some time as well. Uh, Supernova Studio is quite fresh, so it's a big question mark and probably I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle, which is probably unsure. Webflow in the middle too. Adobe XD because of Adobe Cloud is going to be probably evolving. Same for Envision Studio because they're doing really well. Framer X as well, somewhere closer to that edge. Proto.io and Atomic are quite like, um, I think, underdogs and underappreciated tools. And it's just because not many people are used to it, as far as like Principal and Flint, that lots of people know about it, but not many use it actually daily because it's so limited tools. So I think I would put maybe Flint on Principal a bit lower even. Same for Origami Studio, it's such a niche thing and it's quite limited. The prototype has a lot of different outcomes and a lot of functionality which seems promising. So I'm probably gonna put it as well, like higher middle. Marvel keeps on evolving, it's most likely to stay and, and stay for longer. And I think Draftium is a brand new tool. It's unclear how it's gonna stick in the market. It has a lot of capabilities, quite simple though. So I'm gonna put it somewhere here, let's say. And Envision, I don't know what's gonna happen to Envision because every other tool does it already. So I'm gonna probably put it somewhere near the middle, but on a lower end like so. Next thing what I would do is actually identify which of these matter to you most. So let's say if you have a project where you know, it's a brand new tool you need to produce some sort of micro interactions or, or some high fidelity stuff from here. Prototype fidelity would be one spectrum and then another would be price and then I would combine them. We have high versus low, price versus fidelity and then I can restructure the tools and actually make a decision of, you know, which ones of them are actually good for me. Maybe even mark an area, let's say the green zone, which is a low price, high fidelity, maybe that's what you're looking for, 
and whatever tool ends up there, maybe Supernova is here, Envision Studio is somewhere here, so maybe it's not the right one. Actuary is really high fidelity and mid price, maybe somewhere here. Atomic is low priced. Put in, then you can make a decision if it's a tool right for you. I hope this was useful and you know how to, let's say, evaluate the tools more or less. This is a really, you know, blanket statement based video and lots of different assumptions made based on my personal experience, how I use tool in the past, what I observed from other designers. I really hope this was useful for you. If so, give a like, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below if you use any other tools. I might have missed out if I didn't put your tool in. It doesn't mean that, it, you know, the tool is irrelevant. It might just mean that I just haven't had any chance, any experience to use it or it's really niche and I never heard of it. So if so, you know, leave a comment down below. I might just check it out, review it, share it with other subscribers on this channel. And as per usual, stay tuned for more material and I'll see you next time.